Hello coaches, welcome back to another Modern Soccer Coach Breakdown. This week we're going to take a look at dribbling centre-backs. Not an entirely new concept in the game, but is it moving from a novelty to a necessity? Do centre-backs today need to have the ability to dribble out to play at the next level? The big question we're going to look at answering today is where and when do you need center backs to dribble at full speed if you enjoy the work please like and subscribe and if you want more tactical discussion join us on march 28th for our game model webinar link is below okay dribbling center backs let's go all right to look at where and when we've got to look at coach objectives and in order to do that we've got to look at a game model what is a game model it's basically an organized formal detailed document of how a coach wants to play in the different moments of the game when you have the ball, when the opponent has the ball, when you lose the ball, when you win the ball back, those four moments typically make up the majority of a game model. When you're looking at centre-backs dribbling, you're now going one step further into principles and then another step further into sub-principles to look at specifically where and when you want that centre-back to carry the ball and bring more verticality and ball progression to your play as a possession-based team. Again, if you're looking for more information around game models, we've got a webinar coming up on March 28th. You can get the information below where we'll explain a lot more of this here. And you can get your own template to work off and build alongside the webinar. March 28th, link is below. Okay, let's look at four ways that a centre-back can be looking to dribble within the game model. Here we go. All right, the first one is a switch of play. So this is against the 4-2-3-1 example. The ball usually starts on one side where the opponents are organized in a medium block. The opposition will naturally overshift and the weak side center back suddenly has space and an opportunity to progress with the ball. If the pass leads the center back into the space, they can accelerate more naturally with the ball. And then if there's movement ahead, it pushes the opponents further back and then it challenges opposition central midfielders to make a decision. So the centre back can keep carrying the ball until the opposition midfielder steps and then you create a potential overload to progress the ball vertically and create a goal scoring opportunity. Okay, the next one is a bounce option. This time it's against a 4-2-3-1 press. Wide forwards, typically in a 4-2-3-1 press from out to in, so they block those wide passing lanes. The centre forward also arrives too. This is a great opportunity to use the holding midfielder who, even though is probably going to be marked pretty aggressively, you can use that situation to bounce the ball over to the opposite centre back who now has space to carry the ball forward. Again, if the movement and the timing is effective ahead of the ball, that centre back can potentially keep carrying the ball until someone steps Another similar picture this here against the 4-4-2 press and this time you can use a third man run from the centre back. Of course this is a high element of risk but this one comes with an enormous amount of reward because the centre back can accelerate out with the ball and suddenly arrive in front of the opposition back line taking away any holding midfielders as well. So just two different looks there for a bounce option to enable the centre back to carry the ball and break out. This one is a straight up 1v1, but before you get panicked with a high element of risk, this one's a little bit more strategic. This is specifically in a situation where you can take advantage of a forward person who may arc their runs, and this allows the centre back to potentially gain a head start and accelerate away. This will depend on the player profile, but if the centre forward gives up that half yard and the centre back is fast and then the centre forward isn't a fan of back pressing, then you can suddenly find yourself with a highly valuable overload situation in the middle of the pitch. Again, the centre back can carry and then you can manipulate that space higher up the pitch to create a goal scoring opportunity. And then the last one is an invite situation where the opposite of a press the opposition drop into a low block and basically leave the centre-backs free to try and let them break them down. Now, why would a team defend like this? Well, there's a number of reasons. It might be the state of the game. They might be winning or they might have fatigue and look to sit in or they might be dealing with a high volume of rotations and teams will sometimes sit a little bit further back 
and let center backs have the ball and then manage those rotations with extra numbers lower down the pitch. If the center backs are unwilling to drive forward or they're too close together, it can make play really, really predictable where you're already vulnerable to a counter attack. But if the center backs are a little further apart, they can use the space to drive into the inside channel where again, if the movement and the timing is good ahead of the ball, this can contribute to a goal scoring opportunity where the center back can be really involved higher up the pitch. So there you have it coaches, just some ideas around center backs dribbling. Initially when you hear about center backs dribbling, again, depending on the risk level of the coach, but a lot of coaches are really apprehensive because of the risk factor and because if they lose the ball, of course, it's a counter attack and a potential goal scoring opportunity for the opposition. But I think if you're really, really organized with the situations that may even need a defender to dribble and accelerate into space, I think then you can really guide the process a lot more effectively. Now, when you're doing that, the process of doing that will involve being more detailed in how you prepare that game model. And the more detailed you are with that, then you can potentially look at more situations. You can also then be more deliberate with how you plan sessions and exercises and positional work around that there. If you want more information around the game model structure and the game model organization, we're going to look at more specifics around this area on the Modern Soccer Coach Game Model webinar on March 28th. You can reserve your place on the link below if you miss the live event and you register you will get a replay within 24 hours. So there'll be a lot of information there. It'll probably be an hour and a half, two hour webinar with a lot of video like this. And then it'll give you a template as well to go and edit and create your own game model based on your preferences and your philosophy. So as always, really, really appreciate the support. Hope to see you at the game model webinar and I'll definitely see you next week. Goodbye.